Hey guys, what's up? How is everybody doing out there? For those of you that don't know me, my name is Tina and I am the creator of the blog and YouTube channel, Blessed and Beautiful Homestead. Welcome to my channel. I decided that I was going to sit down and chat with you guys today. Um, I am blown away at the response from the DIY hoop house video that Joe and I did for you guys. Um, most of you know, we just created a beautiful 10 by 20 foot hoop house, uh, you know, slash greenhouse, whatever you want to call it on our homestead for gardening. And we wanted to share that with you guys and show you how we did it. Um, and I just love it when I get comments and people are like, oh, I hope you don't mind if we copy this. No, please do. That's why we did it. Um, we want to share this stuff with you guys because, you know, there's a lot of things on the homestead and projects that have to be done. And, you know, we're not all carpenters. We're not all professional contractors. So, you know, it's very awesome that we can go to YouTube and we can find the help that we need there. So please, by all means, copycat all you want because we love sharing this stuff with you guys. So today what I wanted to do with you guys was just sit down and have a little Q&A question and answer session with you because I got so many questions about the hoop house build, um, some that were pretty specific specific as far as what materials we used, how we did it and things like that, what the cost was. So I thought, you know, instead of responding to every single comment, um, I'll go ahead and do a question and answer video for you guys so that you can refer back to it whenever you want to. And then I went in and responded to every comment anyway, because that's just my personality. So you guys, I responded to comments. I approved and disapproved comments for six hours the other day. So, um, um, it's just my personality to want to respond to you guys. Um, it is hard when you have a video like this with this many views and this many questions because you guys know I'm homesteading, I'm homeschooling Parker, I'm I'm a, I'm a wife and I have a business that I run. I mean, it's just crazy busy like everybody is, right? So it is hard to sit down and really get the opportunity to answer all the questions the way that I want to, but um, maybe someday I won't be able to do that, but right now now, if I can take an hour in the morning with coffee and respond, I'm going to do that for you guys. So along with this video, I did go in and I have been continually as they come in answering questions for you guys. So what I did today is I composed the most asked questions that were repetitive in nature from a lot of the subscribers. So obviously those are things that you guys are really wanting to know. So without further ado, let's dive into it. All right, so let me start off with saying that um, we have been blessed to get so many precious comments from you guys. We read every single one of them and I'm just touched. You guys are amazing. Uh, there's so much time and work that goes into these videos and editing and all of this that sometimes you can wonder if people really, if it matters, you know, and I can tell from the comments from you guys that it does matter. So if we can help you out in any way, I'm so happy to do that. And with that are some not so nice comments. Um, so I go through and approve and disapprove and then I respond to the ones that are um, polite and courteous and I will tell you guys if you're a little McNasty okay you know what I'm talking about if you're a little McNasty I'm just gonna delete it because that is very disrespectful I am married you can tell on my channel it's a family channel um, so to leave disgusting um, inappropriate comments sexual comments is just really uncalled for so it's just gonna be straight pfft, deleted I'm not even gonna let that be posted and I'm surely not gonna respond to it um, and the same thing if you're if you're mean to me <laughs> I mean I think I have pretty thick skin okay but dang you guys can cut deep I'm like whoa somebody said I use a brown crayon for my eyebrows I was like, okay, well, you know, I am a homeschooling mom, so I've got lots of crayons to choose from, but I don't use crayons for my eyebrows. I do, however, have super blonde eyebrows, and if I don't color them in, you can't see them. So anyway, I'm not gonna give much energy to that. Let's just dive into these questions, but I did wanna tell you guys, thank you so much for all of your sweet comments. It means the world to me. It is very encouraging and very inspiring and makes us just want to keep doing this with you guys. All right, so, a lot of the questions that I saw um, were about the longevity of that hoop house, how long it might last and things like that. Um, 
you know, based on the way that we chose to do things with the hoop house. And I do want to let you guys in on the fact that Joe retires in two years, actually less than two years. So when Joe retires, we are moving. We are not staying here in the state of Virginia. Um, that's just not what we are doing. So not to say that we're, you know, uh, not putting our whole effort into the things that we're building on this current property because as you guys saw with the actual greenhouse video, we put a lot of work into everything we do um, and mainly because it's going to you know, add value to us while we're living here but also add value to the property when we go to sell it for resale. Um, so no, I did not use the most expensive materials on this hoop house. This is not our forever home. The, the hoop house as is will last for probably two, three, four years before anything has to be done to it. Um, so after we are long gone. So just to put that out there. All right, I have my phone here uh, with the questions that you guys asked. I put them together in a Word doc. So I'm just going to quickly blow through them. I know I get a little chatty and for some of our my guys subscribers, I'm sorry. So here we go. Okay, I'm just going to be like boom, boom, boom. I'm not going to chat too much on each one. I'm going to try not to. Okay, first question is what is the black thing on the hoop house? So you can see in the video there's a black thing over the entire hoop house and that is just a shade cloth. So we live in Virginia. It is very hot and humid here in the summertime where we live in Virginia and if we didn't have a shade cloth on the hoop house, it would get blazing hot in there and it would just kill the plants. So I actually have this shade cloth linked in the description of the video. So you can check it out if you want to. It's fairly inexpensive. And as you see in the video, it fits over pretty much the entire hoop house. And it's just enough to shade the inside. It really brings that temperature down dramatically, but it still allows the sun to come through because the plants, you know, need the sunshine. Supply list, I had a lot of questions, people asking about, um, what, is, what kind of plastic did you use? What kind of this? Uh, what kind of, just everything. I mean, pretty much everything that we used on it. Um, and, I, and I did respond to everybody, but I wanted to let you know that we did put a complete supply list in the description section for the video. And I even added some links in there for things that I could find um, that were exactly like what we bought to kind of help you guys out. So please check out that description box because everything that we used for the Hoop House video is listed in there. Does Joe have a hammer? <laughs> oh my gosh. You guys, he is never going to live that down. He was just dying. We had so many um, comments about the type of hammer that Joe used for the hoop house build. It was a, what is it called? I don't even know what it's called. Ball peen hammer, ball pin hammer. I don't know, whatever. It doesn't have the two claws in it, okay? That's how I talk. Um, so, you guys, Joe seriously has an entire attached garage and a detached metal building workshop loaded with tools. As you guys can see, he is a carpenter, uh, a self-made carpenter. He builds, he fixes, he works on our own, our vehicles. Um, so he has all the tools and he has a ton of hammers. So he literally said to me, um, cause some people left funny comments. They're like, buy that boy a hammer. He deserves a hammer. Um, and some people left some, um, snarky comments basically saying, he was an amateur, didn't know what he was doing, using the wrong hammer. Trust me when I say Joe knows which hammer he needs, but that's just the one he grabbed the day we were building the hoop house. And he told me flat out, he's like, I just didn't feel like walking back to the garage. <laughs> so we just rolled with it. And you know what's crazy? It worked. The hoop house is up and it's gonna be okay. So anyway, I thought that was really funny, um, the hammer joke, because I was looking at other videos like the uh, subsequent videos we've done on the hoop house, the sprinkler system, the ventilation, and Joe actually had the regular hammer and he's like, ah, see, you can show him right there. He's like, let him know I got a hammer, you know. So from Joe, he's got a hammer. Um, <laughs> a lot of people are asking if we have issues with predators crawling underneath the hoop house getting to the plants. I know that this is an issue for a lot of people in your area where you live, but we have never had that issue. Even when before we sold the farm on the big 18 acre property we had, we've never had anything dig down underneath our chicken coop, our greenhouse, nothing like that. So I suppose if that happens, then we'll work on something to mitigate that issue. But as of now, we've never had that problem.
How long will the plastic last? That was a big question. The answer is I don't know. So this is our first season with the hoop house, you guys. So I just don't know how long it's gonna last. I will say it is very thick and very durable. Um, so I would imagine maybe a year or two. I don't really know. So the good thing is, is that it, anything that may go wrong with the hoop house, we're just gonna take it day by day, step by step, upgrade as needed, fix as needed. I mean, isn't that what we do anyway? So um, it's kind of like the actual greenhouse that we built here on the property. A lot of people are like, well, how long is that plastic gonna last because it's the clear uh, roofing panels? I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I don't know how long they last. We just have to wait and see, I guess. But I do plan on doing some update videos for you guys. So a lot of you asked me what the cost of the build was. And I got a lot of comments about, um, a ton of comments about the fact that we did not use treated lumber on the hoop house. So if you watch any of our other build videos, greenhouses, whatever, we always use treated lumber or we stain the lumber. Um, but as you guys know, with the pandemic right now, prices are through the roof for wood. So at the time, we just used what we had on hand. We did have to go to Lowe's and purchase a few things, um, which is included in the cost and I'm gonna discuss with you guys in a minute. But we did have wood here on hand and um, when we built this hoop house, it wasn't as bad price-wise as it is now. Like lumber has just really skyrocketed. So, um, you know, you have to take that into consideration if you're gonna do this build. If you may have to um, look at substituting with something else. I know a lot of people use PVC piping um, instead of the cattle panels. I mean, there's a lot of options for that, but at the time, prices weren't as high, but they were getting higher. So what we did is a mixture of using what we had on hand and then going to Lowe's and getting, you know, just the rest of whatever we needed. So just to, you know, clarify, we know the importance of using treated lumber, um, most definitely, but you know, it is what it is. Sometimes on the homestead, you just throw together what you need quick and in a hurry with what you got. And that's what we did. And I think it turned out great. So if there's any issues, it's okay. We'll address it as they come. The size of the cattle panels, so they were 16 feet long by 50 inches in height. So that is the size of the cattle panels. Uh, I had someone scream at me that they're not called cattle panels, they're called hog fence panels or something, I don't know. And I'm just like, okay, well in my neck of the woods we call them cattle panels and even Tractor Supply where we bought them has them listed as cattle panels. So tomato, tomato, you know, whatever. Um, type of plastic, uh, UV protected thickness. Okay, so again on the plastic, um, you can get the type of plastic that we got either on Amazon or at Lowe's, and I honestly can't remember if we got ours from Lowe's or Amazon, but it's just a base, it's not a, um, it's not specifically for like greenhouse plastic, I don't think, um, but it is a very thick plastic, it's six mil thick, so it's pretty thick, and it is not UV protected, so um, I know a lot of people had an issue with that, and they're like, you better hope it's UV protected, or it's gonna get ruined from the sun. Okay, so we'll just deal with that when it comes I mean, it's okay for now. There's a shade cloth over it. So it is what it is. I'm not really worried about it. Uh, we'll figure it out as we go, but it is not UV protected. So big question on pollinators. Um, there was quite a few people that said, oh great, you're keeping the bugs out and your chickens out, but you're also keeping the pollinators out. Well, if you guys research it, not all plants and fruits and vegetables, they don't all need to be pollinated in order to produce fruit. So there are some that need pollinators and then there are some that don't. So I made sure to look at the do's and the don'ts before we chose the seeds that we were gonna plant for the hoop house. So everything that we have in the green in the hoop house right now, and our greenhouse actually, um, are plants that don't need to be pollinated. So cabbage, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, um, cauliflower, all my lettuces are in my greenhouse. So just go online and research that because it does delineate for you which plants should not be grown in a greenhouse or a hoop house type environment. Um, but no worries, the veggies that we're growing in ours don't need to be pollinated. We've been greenhouse gardening now for several years and we've always had a great harvest and no issues with that. So no worries about the pollinators. 
size of the wood frame. So a lot of people were asking about the wood frame, uh, which I think is just awesome because a lot of the hoop house videos we saw were really short and people were having to hunker down to go into them or um, build them and then dig a trench on the inside to walk so that they their head wasn't hitting the top of the hoop house. So um, I really wanted something that could elevate that roof up off the ground so that we had an open space to walk into. So that wood frame that you guys see all along the bottom of the hoop house, it is um, two feet tall and it's, uh, you know, it's the width, it's the size of the hoop house. So it's 20 feet long and it's 10 feet wide and two feet tall. So someone asked me, what is the height at the peak? So the hoop house, as I just said, is 20 foot long by 10 foot wide and it is seven and a half feet tall. So it's really tall, you guys. I'm like five five and I have like major space above my head in there. So it's just really awesome. It's super tall. That's why, that's one of the reasons I really love this design. So there were some questions about how did we anchor the hoop house down? Did we cement the four posts and the four by fours that were in the four corners? And the answer is yes. Um, we cemented the four by four posts into the ground about two feet down. And then we also used the metal T posts that you guys saw. So we, we just added the T posts for extra support. Um, I don't really even know if it's necessary, but we do get some high winds here in the in the summertime and we even get tornadoes. So we were just trying to add some extra support there. So Joe did put those down, those T-posts down. There's four T-posts, two on each side. Those are anchored down into the ground as well. So I did have a question on why is Joe sawing off that T-post? Why wouldn't he just hammer it down flush with the uh, ground? And that particular T-post that you see him sawing off, we hit rock or we hit something and we could not get that t-post down anymore all the other ones are hammered all the way down and flush with the ground except for that one and he was just over it so he just sawed it off at the wood frame so somebody asked me, how do we cool the hoop house in the summertime and how do we uh, keep it warm in the winter? So this is similar to our greenhouses. In the summertime, we always have fans running. We have windows with screens for ventilation. And if you guys want to check out my hoop house ventilation video that I just did, um, we actually just did roll up sides on the whole bottom of the hoop house and put screen in there. So all the sides of the hoop house is now open and the air flows really nicely in there. So ventilation is a big thing uh, to help cool the hoop house down. Um, I would definitely recommend the fans of some sort. You can even get solar powered fans and also a shade cloth. Um, you guys, when you're in there working in the hoop house and harvesting or planting in the dead of summer, it can get hot and way too still if you don't have fans and you don't have a shade cloth. Um, not saying you have to do these things. I'm just sharing with you what I have found to work the best. So that is how we cool the hoop house in the summertime. In the winter, Joe usually builds like a frame with plastic to cover the windows. Um, Cause as you guys saw, we have a window in the back of the hoop house, a big window. And then we have a smaller window in the door, the front door. So we will cover those windows with a framed um, with plastic that's framed with wood to keep that cool air out in the winter time. Um, and of course, those roll up sides that we just did for ventilation, we purposely did not cut the plastic so that in the winter, we can roll it back down and fasten it to keep the warmth in. And of course, you most likely don't need to use your fans depending on what kind of climate you live in. Lots of questions on, uh, did we add vents? If we did, what kind of vents? Again, I just linked that video for you guys because we did add some more vents to the hoop house, so make sure you check that out. Um, the next the next question is how do we attach the panels to the wood while securing? So this is a really good question. But essentially all we did is you guys see the top of that wood frame in the video. Joe hammered in nails every so many feet down that wood frame. And then when we put the cattle panel, when we hooped it over, we stuck that panel on the inside of those nails. So the cattle panel, because of the resistance, 
is pushing against those nails that he hammered in. He didn't nail them in all the way, he just nailed them in halfway. And so it held that cattle panel in place while we went along and nailed in the rest of the nails to secure it. And then when he was done, he would then hammer in those nails all the way, but he would hammer them hooped over um, the galvanized steel from the cattle panel. So somebody asked if we had actual plans for the build and sadly the answer is no. You guys, Joe really, um, just shoots from the hip on these builds. And, you know, I apologize if you don't feel like the video is um, enough to kind of figure out just from watching it. Joe kind of gets his, his average dimensions and then he builds everything off of that. So I do not have actual plans for this build. So some people were asking about irrigation and we um, have another video right here on how we installed overhead irrigation sprinklers in the hoop house and they are phenomenal. In fact, I just went out and watered the hoop house this morning and I turn those sprinklers on and I go off and I, I feed the chickens or I go do something else and then I can come back and just turn that switch off and the entire hoop house is watered. So it's really fast, it's really convenient and the type of sprinklers that we used um, are really awesome because the way that they spray out, there isn't any plants in there that aren't getting water. And today I even dug down a little bit next to the plants because I wanted to see just how much it penetrates and everything was watered really well. So if you are looking for a great way to um, irrigate your plants in your hoop house or your maybe even your greenhouse or something, I would encourage you to check out that video because it was just a super simple, inexpensive setup and it works really great. What kind of wood did we use? We used pine. Can it be used for livestock? Absolutely. Um, I had several people telling me that they had these and they turned them into chicken coops. One lady shared with me that she was going to be making her goat shelter out of this. And obviously you can modify um, to make it for your livestock. But yes, this design is really a multi-purpose design. Some people were saying they were going to use it as a garden shed for their lawnmowers and stuff. Somebody even said they were thinking about building something like this for an RV um, like carport. So I mean, you might have to tweak the build a little bit, but it really is something that can be multi-purpose for whatever you need it to be. So now I'm going to share with you guys the cost of our hoop house. And I think that you will probably be shocked. I had a lot of comments that were um, saying, wow, this must have been super expensive. And you guys, in my opinion, it really was inexpensive to build this hoop house. That's why I'm raving about it and sharing it with everybody because we've built two actual greenhouses um, and now the hoop house. And by far the hoop house was the easiest to put up and it was the most inexpensive. Expensive. Now, with that being said, obviously this is pricing for where we live in Virginia um, and also pricing before everything got too bad with the pandemic for the wood prices, but they were, st were still starting to get kind of jacked up there on the wood prices. For our greenhouse build that we did here on the homestead, it was about $2,500 that we spent to build that. So this hoop house was a fraction of the cost. So altogether, uh, let's see here, Joe added everything up. The total cost of our hoop house was $554. That's it. I mean, in my opinion, I think that's really inexpensive. Just a couple of things. I won't read the whole list here, but you know, the pipe insulation that we use to protect the plastic was um, eight dollars and fifty-two cents. We bought six of those. Um, he's so funny. He got so detailed. He even put like box of screws. <laughs> um, the plastic was $88. So it was a 20 by 100 foot roll of plastic. And that was $88 cattle panels. We used five cattle panels in all, and they were $23 each. So it was a total of $115 for those cattle panels. Let's see what else. Uh, the screen was $16. You don't, that was before we did the um, vented sides all along the bottom. So just for the window in the door and the window in the back of the hoop house, that was all we at the time had used the screen for. So we didn't need a very big roll of screen for that. T-posts, we used four of the T-posts that I was sharing with you guys that we drove down to help anchor the hoop house. And that was $22 for four of them. 
and of course the uh, the wood. So he's got 17 two by four by eights. We spent about $92 on that. Two by four by tens, we bought 12 of those and we spent about $96 on that. Two by two by eights, we spent 15, 12 on four of those. One by two by eights, we spent $24 on 15 of those. Four by four by eights, we spent $19 on two of those. And then you had some miscellaneous things like zip ties, U nails, and things like that. And we also spent $7 on two bags of cement to anchor the four posts in. All right, you guys, so now that we're done with the most asked questions on the Hoop House, I thought it would be fun to just share with you guys some really cool tips that I got from subscribers on the channel. The first one is, if you drop the end of the plumb line in a bucket of water or fluid, it can help limit the swaying to give a good reading quicker. How genius is that? It's because we sure were waiting for that line to quit swaying for a long time before we could mark the middle of the hoop house. So um, for those of you that don't know what they're talking about is the homemade plumb line that we use to center the hoop house. A lot of times you see these hoop houses and they're, they're crooked and that's how we got ours so centered was with hanging that plumb line. Um, but it was funny because it was a windy day so it was swaying. So he's saying drop it into a bucket of water and it will help the swaying. I mean, that's just so smart. I think that's genius. So thank you for that tip. The next tip says um, they sell strapping by the roll that many people use to keep the wind from blowing the plastic away. You can nail it to the base and she says, I would do a strap every four to five feet down in length. We have strong winds here too. So yeah, that's definitely a great idea. Another tip that I got was to run a center beam down the hoop house to give extra support for people that might live in areas that get a lot of snow. A lot of people said use screws, not nails. It makes it easier for maintenance later. So, you know, when we were um, hammering in, what is that? I can never remember. Is it a one by one or one by two? Whatever. That little strip of wood that is actually securing the plastic to the two by four. Um, we use nails and a lot of people were saying use screws because for maintenance later, if you've got to remove the plastic for something, um, you can just unscrew it. it. It does make sense to me that a screw would be a lot easier to just drill out versus using a hammer, especially if Joe doesn't use the right hammer. <laughs> All right. Um, a lot of people talked about using a solar kit for the fans and even having lights in there. We did that at the farm in our big greenhouse. And I'll tell you guys, it was awesome. It really was. If you can tack weld the panels together, it will be a lot stronger. So tack welding the panels, the cattle panels together versus the zip ties, that's a great idea. I also got a million comments on the fact that we use zip ties to secure the panels together and how the sun and the heat was gonna rot them and make them brittle, they were gonna break. Okay, sure, maybe. <laughs> I mean, um, we can uh, we can always add some wire or something in there, but um, it was just what we had on hand at the time, and it works for now. So, um, a lot of comments about the plastic, making sure that it's UV protected. So, if you want a um, plastic that's going to last you a really long time, it would probably be better to spend a little extra money to make sure that it's UV protected. Um, we didn't do that, so we just have regular plastic on there. You might want to use hog rings instead of zip ties to hold the panels together. So again, um, more comments on the zip ties. Got it. Cover the ground with hardware mesh to keep gophers, squirrels, and other thieves from digging under. Again, we don't have that issue here, but that is a really good idea. So I think that's about it, you guys. I'm just checking my notes. Um, and as always, please feel free to comment me. I, I love your guys' comments and Joe and I will always do our best to try to help you guys out. So I'm serious. There's so many of you that are saying, I'm gonna go and build this. Like this, this is what I'm gonna do this summer. So if you get into the middle of that and you get stuck or something, message me. Um, we're totally cool with that. I love hearing from you guys. So we've been hearing from people from all over the world, France, Australia, Italy, I mean, I just cannot believe how many people are connected with us and I just think it's really cool. So I may have missed some questions here or there. I hope I didn't. I'm doing my best to um, respond to each and every one of you. Um, that's really important to me. People need to feel important, right? So 
it may not be right away, but I will always respond to you. And a lot of times, if you see a heart next to the comment, that means I've seen it um, and I just haven't had a chance to respond yet, but I just want you to know I've seen it, I've read it, um, and I'm here. I'm here and I'm listening. So, all right, you guys, I really hope that you are enjoying this, what has turned out to be a uh, DIY hoop house video series. We've got three of these videos on there now, how to build it, how to put in irrigation sprinklers, how to um, do more ventilation in your hoop house. So it's just kind of all around um, fantastic and it's really cool. And I'll be sure to update you guys also with how the hoop house is doing. Like I said, here in Virginia, we have high winds, we get tornadoes. So um, I'll let you guys know maybe this fall how things went um, and if the hoop house is still here on the property. All right, you guys, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. I really hope that it was helpful. I took a lot of time going through, I think there's like 800 and something, as of now, 800 and something comments on this video. So I, I like I said, I spent six hours in there the other day going through all of them and, um, just really wanted to put this together for you guys to help you out. So I hope it was helpful. Please click that like button for me. And if you're new to my channel and you haven't subscribed, I would love for you to become a part of our homestead family. If you haven't done so already, check out my playlist on the channel, Gardening and Greenhouses, because I have all of our other builds in there too. Till next time, have a blessed day. Channel, blessed and beautiful homestead. Ugh. Creator of the blog. Mm. Some of the subscribers. Some awesome tips on some of the, some awesome tips that we got from some subscribers. What is going on?